article I was asked to write in 2010 for the Islamic Center of San Gabriel Valley, known as the Walnut Mosque. The editor-in-chief there said, can you write a parenting article? And what had happened was in 1997, when my son was born, I was really interested in reading books about parenting, but there were no books on the market for teaching Muslims how to raise their kids in the West. There were a lot of you know, Western books, and there were books about teaching kids how to get toilet trained and teaching kids how to you know, eat their first foods, but nothing about raising Muslim kids in California in 1997. There were some classical Arabic texts that had been translated, but nothing that really felt relevant to what I was dealing with and what my friends were dealing with. So what I did was, um, any time I saw a family that really impressed me, if I saw kids who impressed me, if I saw adults who impressed me, I would just take them aside and I just kind of grill them, like at dinner parties or anywhere I saw them, I'd be like, Auntie, Uncle, I have to interview you. I have to ask you, what did you do uh, you know, to make your kids so amazing? Chef Naman Bey, who's the chef of uh, Institute of Knowledge, his mother just passed away. And uh, he told us that, you know, it's like I lost my mother and my father because my father passed away at, um, when I was four years old. So I was just automatically fascinated that how did um, Chef Naman turn out the way he did when he was raised by a single mother? And, you know, his mother had passed away by, you know, at this point. And so I just grilled his sisters, his four sisters. I was like, tell me everything. What did your mother do to make him and all of you the way you are? So I learned even from that just a couple of weeks ago. So basically that's what I've been doing, interviewing families. But what I noticed was over time, no matter what the advice was, there was a whole kind of variety of advice. But the same 10 pieces of advice seemed to keep cropping up. There were like 10 categories that keep, kept coming up. And so when I was asked to write this article, I thought, this is perfect. I have this chance now to take all this information swimming around in my head and get it down. And alhamdulillah, when I wrote it, you know, the, the local, the, Islam, the Islamic Center's newspaper appreciated it. But then Chef Raz Rabani from Seekers Hub asked me if he could publish it on their blog. And uh, of course I said, you know, I was so honored. And mashallah, they told me that in two days they had 24,000 people read it. And it's um, gone around the globe every month, even now, six years later, mashallah, every month I get two or three letters or emails from people who've read the article somewhere in the world, um, either thanking me or just, you know, wanting some more uh, questions answered. So alhamdulillah, I feel there's been barakah in it, and I want to make it very clear, this is not my wisdom. This is not like, oh, do what I did, I have all the answers. This is honestly just tips and advice that I've gotten from families. So, um, just to begin with, a little bit about what kinds of people impressed me. I always had the impression, and this was in, an incorrect impression, that you either were really dini and religious and uh, had your priorities straight, straight in the you know, Islam department, but maybe you were socially awkward, didn't necessarily do that well in school or in sport, or you were the opposite, which was you did really well in school, you did really well in sports, got on the top universities, top jobs, but religion was on the back burner. Re religion was not a high priority. I thought it was one or the other. So with these families, what I saw was there was a really good mix between the two. And they were the ones I took aside, a lot of them. And uh, so one example of a child was uh, this 10-year-old uh, boy came and spent the night in our home. And my children were really little at the time. And um, at Fudger, when my husband and I got up, I said, you know, it's his first time spending the night here. He might be nervous. Um, let me go check on him, you know, make sure he's OK. This, this, and my children were still young. They, they weren't getting up for Fudger. So when I went to my kid's bedroom, I saw that the light was already on in the room, shining out from under the door. And when I went and saw this boy had already woken up, had already paid, prayed Fajr, and then was sitting there reciting Quran. And he was also a kid who was like a soccer marvel. He went on to play football for four years in high school, did really well. And uh, mashallah, I was really impressed with, with how this kid was very balanced and I thought even more impressive than, than adults I knew. Like, I know I wasn't up that early reciting Quran. He was already done with Fajr and was reciting Quran, mashallah. Um, I know of a young man who took his, his, he was raised by a single mother, and his mother wanted to go to Jordan to learn Arabic. And he's an adult now, married with children. He got on the plane, flew his mother all the way to Jordan, and then the next day took, took a flight and came all the way back to California. He went all the way across the globe just to escort his mother, his elderly mother, so that she wasn't alone. He didn't just send her on a plane. Um, another time I was with a lady who was a UC, UC Berkeley graduate, 
and um, you know, we had a good career going for her, and she, her parents lived with her, and we were going somewhere, and we got in the car, and we drove away, and we were at the end of the road when she said, you know, I just realized I never said salams to my mother before I left. Can we turn the car around? I need to go and say salams to her. I was like, you see your mom all the time. You live with her 24-7. But the fact that she had that kind of other that it was important to her to go back and make sure she said salams to her mother, really stood out. So these are just a few examples of what kinds of people have really impressed me, mashallah. So I'll just jump right into it. And the order of these 10 tips are not in the order of what I think is important. They were, they're in the order of what was said to me from majority to you know, a little bit more to the minority. So the majority, what every single family has told me, is du'a, du'a, du'a. None of the families took it for granted that their kids were the way they were. They all said this is from Allah. They didn't take credit for it. They didn't think their job was over, even after their, you know, they were grandparents. They didn't take it for granted that their kids were going to be many in their entire lives. They always said that, you know what, nothing is guaranteed until we have husn al khatima beautiful ending, and that we die with the shahada on our lips. They told me that any time they needed to make a decision about their kids' lives, that they weren't sure which way to go, they did Salat al the prayer of guidance. Um, any time there was something they really needed for their kids that they felt was very important, they wanted it, they did Salat al the prayer of need. Um, they, any time they got what they wanted, whether it was a, a great exam result or a clear health report, they did Salat al the prayer of gratitude. They got up in the last third of the night, prayed the hajjah, and prayed for their children. Um, one mom told me that she prayed for her children to have wonderful spouses from the moment her kids were born. She was already praying for Allah to send a soul in the world who would grow up to be a wonderful spouse for her children. And we're seeing that now. Her son just got married, and he married an amazing girl. And mashallah, she told her daughter-in-law, I've been making dua for you since the day my son was born. So, mashallah. Um, one mom told me, whose kids really impressed me, that she recited Surah Maryam every day of her pregnancy. This is not anywhere from the Sunnah. It's not a requirement. This is something she did. She took on, and when I asked her why, why did you recite Surah Maryam every day? And she said it was because she was really impressed with the way uh, the way the prophets were described in Surah Maryam, and she was really moved by the descriptions of the believers, and so. She um, wanted that for her kids, and so she recited Surah Maryam because it really touched her heart. Let's see. Um, you know, my son, my eldest son, just got a job at Baskin Robbins scooping ice cream, and somebody reminded me that I should, before he got that job, when he was still looking for work, uh, somebody reminded me that I should be praying for him to always have a halal income because it's really easy to um, take a job and not even realize that you're doing something haram in your in your work. And so to always pray that your children have a halal this. Okay, and um, one mom told me that while they were pregnant, while they were expecting, she, and even before they got pregnant, making the intention that why do we want children? Is it just because we want to be a mom and dad, or is it because we want to raise salihin, who will carry on this deen and will remember Allah, and will be an example for the Umar, the prophets, and love and so on. Okay, the second tip these parents told me is suhba will make you or break you. Your companionship will make you or break you. My, my mother always said to me when we were younger that don't assume you're better than your friends. You are who your friends are. And um, I know one scholar said to us that there's nothing worse than a stingy Muslim, but the one thing you should be stingy with is your time. You shouldn't give your time to just everybody. Um, I know my husband and I, we had a very different group of friends, a, a different community. When I married him, he didn't have any Muslim friends. And uh, gradually we made some Muslim friends, but they weren't practicing. And that was our social crowd for a long time. After we had our children, we made a, we made a big change. We uh, consciously decided that we needed to bring friends in our lives who reminded us of Allah who were good examples and who were role models for what we wanted from our children. And so we actually changed our social community. And it was painful. It wasn't easy. It didn't happen overnight. There were some hurt feelings as people realized that we were kind of drifting apart or pulling away. But there was a reason behind it. And it was really for the therapy of our children. Because you can't tell your kids, 
uh, you know, do as we say, not as we do, you know? Like if they see the adults in their lives doing one thing, but they're telling them to do another, kids pick up on hypocrisy very quickly. So Sohba is very, very important. Um, I know Sheikh Hamza Yusuf up north, he told us that on the day of judgment, you'll be with those whom you love. So choose who you love wisely. So um, it's really important that when you look at your friends, you, you take, take note in your heart that, okay, are these people who are, who are inspiring me to, the be to be the best that I can be? And are these friends people who remind me of Allah? Or are they people that I'm really literally just wasting my time with? Yeah, I'm having fun, I'm laughing and joking, but there's really no other benefit beyond that short-term enjoyment. One thing that I've learned in the last few years that I don't have in my article because I did not know this back in 2010, but I've come to realize it now, is that people should not underestimate the importance of mentorship. You should be looking for good mentors in the community for your kids. I, my husband and I give a lot of credit for how we, the good things that we see in our sons, mashallah, we give a lot of credit for that to the young uncles, we call them, the young uncles in their lives who inspire them, who are a good influence on them. And these are people that, you know, they're young guys in the community who are in their 20s, maybe even early 30s, who uh, are maybe still single or just got married and have young kids, but they... They connect with the kids, they know how, you know, they, they play sports, they know what's going on with pop culture, but they're dini too, and their families have good track record. You see that they like to come to the masjid. From the center alone, I can tell that you're going to find a lot of them here, inshallah, the way people were so organized getting this place set up. It showed that people are very active. So, you know, looking for people who maybe lead halakas, Sunday school teachers. Um, I know that I have a friend who has a daughter, and she, my friend does not understand her daughter at all. And she said to me and another girlfriend of ours that, you know, my daughter really likes you guys. And you, she thinks you're cool, you're funny, she enjoys your company. And I really need you guys to take my daughter under your wing. Because there are certain things about her I just don't understand. We don't see eye to eye. She frustrates me. And so I need you to help me. I, I need you to help me understand her. And I need you to help get what I need across to my daughter because sometimes kids can't hear it from their parents and so my girlfriend and I we agreed to that and now that young girl who I've known since the age of two is uh, mashallah in college and she's turned out to be incredible and I don't give that credit to myself I don't think I had anything to do with that I give that credit to her mother who kept her eyes and ears open and realized okay I don't have everything that my daughter needs and so I'm going to go out and try and find it and get it for her so mentorship is really important. Kids should not just be friends with kids their age. Peers should not be raising peers. People of all different ages can benefit from one another. 